Hi everyone! I am here with a book haul. I have a lot of things to share, so I'm going to try and go through these pretty quickly. These are all of the books that I've acquired this year so far, and I've had a lot of things to celebrate, so I've indulged quite a bit. I've first celebrated my birthday, which was back in February. On the actual day itself, I was so busy, I was at school for 13 or 14 hours, so all I really did to celebrate my birthday on the actual day was eat like three donuts. So I bought myself some books a couple weeks later to kind of give myself something for my birthday. I also finished school that next week, so I was celebrating that. And then a couple of weeks later, I got a job back home. Yesterday was Independent Bookstore Day, and I've been employed for a month now. I felt like those things were also worth celebrating, so yeah, I've indulged a bit, but I am really excited to share. First are these, which my aunt and uncle got me for my birthday. I have. Amphigori 1 and Amphigori 2. These are collections of Edward Gorey comics. He writes kind of morbid, kind of dark, but also kind of funny comics that really remind me of the style of like Lemony Snicket series of unfortunate events type humor. I posted an Edward Gorey comic online and then my uncle saw it and decided to get me these two things so I could read a little bit more of his stuff which I thought was really nice. Totally up my street, really excited to dip in and out of these. The week after my birthday, I graduated from my engineering program and my boyfriend came to visit me. I hadn't seen him for like two months and how do we celebrate? We went to a couple bookstores, of course. We went to Wicker Park, which is kind of like the hip neighborhood of Chicago and there are a lot of really great bookstores there. First, we went to Myopic Books, which is a beautiful bookstore, but I didn't feel very inspired. Nothing was really sticking out to me, which was sad. I just hadn't really been interested in books or read anything for a couple of months. so. Not a lot of things were jumping out at me, but as we were waiting in line to pay for my boyfriend's book, uh, I saw this, which is Swamplandia by Karen Russell, and I decided to pick it up. This is probably going to be something that I want to read after I read St. Lucie's Home for Girls Raised by Wolves, which I don't own, but I think one of those stories relates to this novel, the story of this novel, which I think is about a family in Florida who has an alligator theme park or something, I don't know. It's Karen Russell. I wasn't super impressed with her collection of short stories that I read a couple months ago, which is Vampires in the Lemon Grove, but I have high hopes for her because I've heard that's the weakest of her writing, and I'm really hoping that I like her stuff. She delves in magical realism and fabulous fiction, and her stuff's very weird, and I think it's something that I'll really enjoy. Then we went down the street to a comic book store called Quimby's. They sell comic books, but also zines, and then specially curated books, but I was mostly interested in the graphic novels. First I picked up Step Aside Pops by Kate Beaton. I was inspired to pick this up, first of all because I've wanted to read a Kate Beaton thing for years and just never have. And secondly, I had a friend at my engineering program who's actually friends with her and we had a little nice conversation about how lovely she is as a person, so I decided to support her by buying one of her books. This is her most recent collection. She writes little comics about history and literature and they're supposed to be really funny and clever and really interesting and I'm very excited to get to this. And then I picked this up and I'll admit I was first interested in it because it's yellow and it's this. It's called Nijigahara Holograph by Inio Asano. Yeah, the spine is yellow, the cover's yellow. Uh, this is supposed to be like a psychological thriller. It says on the back that it's David Lynchian and that this manga artist is is like a really great voice of current Japan, which I'm very interested in. Also I'm interested because this is a standalone manga. A lot of manga series are really long, and I'm not really interested in reading a series that has 20 or 30 volumes because they're all like $10 a piece and that can be really expensive. And usually I'm not finding the stories to be super compelling and I would much rather just watch them as an anime, and I don't really like anime that much anymore, so anyway, I'm very interested in seeing what a standalone manga is like because it's not something that I have seen very many of. And yeah, it looks creepy and weird and... I don't know, I liked it because it was yellow and I didn't, I'd never heard of it before. It's not really the kind of thing I hear talked about on booktube, so I was worried, you know, if I didn't pick it up then I would never see it again or hear about it and probably would have forgotten the title. So I'm glad that I bought it and I'm excited to read it. Fast forward a little bit to me being back home. I was passing by Barnes Noble and I decided to stop in. Of course then I couldn't stop myself from buying a couple of things. First being Number 9 Dream by David Mitchell. I've already read this and reviewed it, so I don't want to talk about it too much. I was interested in reading this because I, I wanted to see if I could read them in chronological order, and I was looking for his first novel. This is actually his second novel, but I picked it up and I read the back and I couldn't resist. I really, really loved it, so it was a good pick. I also have read this already, and it is My Brilliant Friend by Elena Ferrante. I wanted to see what the Ferrante fever was all about. People have been really loving this series. It's the Neapolitan novels. It's a tetralogy that just finished. It's a saga of these two friends living in, in Italy starting in the 1950s in a really impoverished post-war neighborhood. I haven't fallen in love with it yet, but 
I'm interested to see where the series goes. So, also I picked up Mr. Splitfoot, which seems to be kind of fairy tale-ish, kind of ghost story-ish. I think I heard about this on Mercedes from Mercy's Bookish Music's channel. I don't remember if she liked it or not, but it was something that really intrigued me. Also, I was intrigued not only because Kelly Link blurbed the back, but also Charlotte Bronte has blurbed the back. This is a new release, by the way. It says Charlotte Bronte, speaking through a medium, has blurbed this, and I know that this has something to do with being able to talk to ghosts. It's probably related somehow, but I thought that, that was really interesting and bold that they would do that. Shortly after that Barnes & Noble trip, I was visiting Boulder, which is a city that's about 40 minutes away, so it's hard to justify driving 80 minutes total to go to a bookstore. But it's my favorite used bookstore in my state that I found. It's really, really fun. There's always new stuff that I'm finding, and it's massive, so you can just go through the shelves for hours. They're really, really good for literary fiction. Anyway, I was going to Boulder for a job interview and it went really well and I didn't know if I'd get the job or not, but I figured since I was up there I might as well stop by. Now I have the privilege of making that drive five days a week, but I didn't know that at the time, so I decided to indulge myself a little bit, reward myself with some books. So I stopped in and I got these things. First was Half of a Yellow Sun by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. I really loved Americana and I've wanted to read more of her stuff since I read it over a year ago. This takes place in the 1960s in Nigeria, which is not a period of time or a place that I know much about, but it follows five characters during a time of major political turmoil as they're trying to establish an independent republic, and that sounds really interesting. I'm always interested in reading books about things that I don't know much about and educating myself a little bit, so really excited about this. I also picked up The Accidental by Ali Smith. I have been con convinced to read an Ali Smith book by Joanne Campbell because she speaks nothing but praises of, of Ali Smith's work. I've really been wanting to read something of hers for a long time, but it's not something that's really in bookstores around here. I don't know if it's, it's she's not as popular in the United States, so it's harder to find her stuff, but I've never seen one in a bookstore before, so when I saw a copy of The Accidental at this bookstore, I had to pick it up. It's about a stranger interacting with a family while they're on holiday, and I think that each part of the novel kind of addresses the different family's perspectives on this girl. Also, the, there's the phrase enigmatic conclusion that someone underlined in pencil, so that's exciting. Um, I don't know what that means. I also picked up Under the Skin by Michel Faber. He's a really interesting author because his books are very different from one another. I've read Crimson Petal in the White, which was a Victorian historical fiction, and The Book of Strange New Things, which was literary science fiction. This to me sounds like a suspense thriller, and I'm really excited to see his take on it. It's about a woman who is picking up hitchhikers in the Scottish Highlands. It says it's gr a grotesque and comical allegory, and I'm really excited to see what it's like, because I've really enjoyed both of his works, and they were so distinct from one another. I also picked up Boy Snow Bird by Helen Oyeyemi. I wanted to give her, as an author, a second chance for a long time, because about a year and a half ago I read White is for Witching and really didn't like it. I found the magical realism to be confusing and incomplete and I just didn't really get it and I didn't know if I just like was missing the point of it. So I didn't really enjoy that but I wanted to read some of her other stuff because it also sounds really good. This is supposed to be a fairy tale retelling of Snow White about a woman who marries a man and then becomes a stepmother and she's really worried about becoming the evil stepmother. She later has a baby and the baby has dark skin so she finds out that her husband and his family have been passing for white. I think it's an examination of race in the 1950s, 1960s through a fairy tale lens, which I'm very interested in. And the last thing that I got on this trip was Blindness by Jose Saramago, translated by Juan Saguer. Jose Saramago won the Nobel Prize for Literature. He is a Portuguese author. This seems to me to be a literary suspense, possibly horror, about a town that goes blind and, and how the blind are taken advantage of. And I find this to sound very interesting because I, as a person who has really, really bad eyesight, one of my biggest fears is not being able to see. Losing my vision, my eyes getting worse to the point where they can't be fixed. Losing my glasses, or them getting broken, some of my active fears. And I loved Bird Box by Josh Mallerman, which is a horror novel all about not being able to see what could really harm you and having to intentionally close your eyes to prevent yourself from being hurt. So I think that the, the idea of, of horror and not being able to rely on visual descriptions and figurative language sounds really interesting and compelling to me. Also, I've been wanting to read more translated fiction. I don't know if I've ever read a work by someone from Portugal, so I'm interested in this. A little while later, my boyfriend very kindly gifted me Mr. Fox by Helen Oyeyemi. And again, I wanted to give her another try. This sounds totally different than her two other works. It is about a, an author named Mr. Fox, and he can't seem to help but kill off all of the women in his books. And then I think 
that his muse intervenes somehow, which sounds really quirky and interesting. I'm really interested to see how people feel about it um, and see how I feel about it too. I also, for the first time ever, accepted books for review from a publisher. First is Heart Attack Watch by Alison Foster. This is a short story collection that seems to surround destruction and disaster. Those seem to be the themes that uh, are unifying all the stories. I've only read three so far. I'm enjoying it. Not blown away, but it's good so far. I also have The Sunlit Night by Rebecca Dinerstein. This is about two individuals who go to a small archipelago off the coast of Norway, and they are trying to find themselves, um, and then of course they probably strike up a friendship or a romance of some kind. I think a key motif in this is the the fact that the sun doesn't set, it's always bright, being that far north, and I think that's a really interesting thing that I would like to read more about. And last is The Bricks That Built the Houses by Kate Tempest. I haven't read anything by Kate Tempest, but I've heard really good things about Brand New Ancients bought from Jean over at Bookish Thoughts, and also I know Jean really enjoyed Hold Your Own, which is a book of her poetry. I know that she's a poet and she's also a rapper. This is her debut novel. The other works I just referred to were poetry, so I'm excited about this. The, the jacket's very vague about what this is actually about, but that probably means that it's really character driven, which are kind of the kinds of stories I go for. Also, I ordered a book from Brittany from Under the Radar Books. She has an Etsy shop where she does blind dates with books, so you can give her your Goodreads and she'll pick out a book that she thinks you'll like, and it comes all wrapped up, and so you don't know what it's going to be, and I was really excited to do this. I meant to film it as I unboxed it, but I didn't, so, so unfortunately you don't get to see the beautiful packaging it came in, but this is the book itself. It's called Pure by Juliana Baggett. It seems to be an adult post-apocalyptic slash dystopian trilogy. This is the first one. I don't know exactly what it's about. Something involving after the apocalypse, people who are, are still strong and able-bodied, they become soldiers and join the militia, and everybody else who is hurt becomes like essentially human targets and they're, they're treated as less than human. I'm intrigued about this for two reasons. Firstly, I've never seen the cover. I've never heard of it, which is exciting because usually with, with series like this, I feel like I would have expectations set by having heard about it other places, but I don't have those because I've never heard of it, seen it, or anything. And secondly, it was blurred on the back by Amy Bender, which kind of surprised me, honestly, because Amy Bender writes fabulous, magical, realistic fiction, very literary, and that, to me, just based on the cover and the description, did not seem to me at all what this was. So the fact that Amy Bender blurbed it gives me a lot of hope, and I'm really, really excited about it. So thank you, Brittany. Not to say I wasn't excited about it before, but that was just like icing on the cake. Amy Bender liked this book. I'm excited. So the home stretch. Yesterday was Independent Bookstore Day. I wanted to celebrate. Also, I had just completed my first month of employment and I had just gotten paid, so I was really excited to, to support some of my local bookstores. The first bookstore we went to was kind of a bust. It was a lot of collectible antiquarian books that I wasn't very interested in. At least where I am in my life right now, I want books that I can really enjoy. And I like having a collection, but I want to be able to read them and not feel like if they get damaged that I've ruined something really valuable. So they didn't have a lot of, of, of newer books, which is more of what I was looking for, so that was kind of a bust. But then we went to a second bookstore and I found a lot of things I was really excited about, so I'm going to share them with you now. The first thing that I found was The Elephant Vanishes by Haruki Murakami. I do have a couple of unread Murakami books on my shelves right now. I'm, I'm going to read all of his published works eventually. Um, and secondly, I am going to pick up any of these editions that I find because vintage has changed what the US editions look like. Now they have weird, like blurry, blobby colors and they don't mean anything. They just seem like unnecessarily sur surrealist and, and odd and I don't like them at all. Most of my other Murakami books are in these editions, so I want them to all to match because I am kind of superficial, but I just, I really dislike the the new vintage US editions. And if I have to, I will buy the UK, UK editions over the, the new editions, but I would like to have them all like this. So I saw it and I had to buy it. It's a collection of Murakami's short stories. I believe this is one of his earlier collections and I'm excited to read it. Speaking of Amy Bender, I picked up this, which is a collection of her short stories. I really liked The Particular Sadness of Lemon Cake, which they also had a copy of. I don't own that book, was kind of tempted about it, but I decided to get something of hers that I hadn't read yet, and I'm really excited about her short stories because I just imagine them to be as strange and wonderful as her novel was, and just 
many more of her stories and ideas, and I'm excited about that. I also picked up Our Souls at Night by Kent Haruf. I think I heard about this maybe on the Book Riot website. I can't remember for the life of me now why I was interested in this, but I didn't know before I bought it. I just found out that this is an author from Colorado, which is where I live, and all of his stories take place in Colorado. I think the only book that I've ever read that took place in Colorado was The Shining. So I'm excited to read a book that is written by someone who was born in Colorado, lived here, understands it as a place. I think that's gonna be really interesting. I I'm really, really excited about this. This is a book that I've been wanting to read since I first heard about it on Mercedes' channel probably at least a year, maybe two ago, and it is Fudoki by Kaij Johnson. This is a novel that takes place in Imperial Japan. I'm imagining it's like Heian era, so like at least a thousand years ago. It's about a, a female warrior. There's also something involving a cat spirit, that just sounds like it's ringing all of my bells. Japan, cats, strong women. So I'm really excited about this. I've heard nothing but great things about Kaij Johnson, particularly from Mercedes, but also Marissa from Little Spider 9 had read this and loved it, and our tastes seem to align pretty well. So I'm really excited about this. Lastly, my last two books, I wandered over to the science fiction and fantasy section, and I saw the Catherine M. Valente Fairyland series that had the first three, Great Condition, I thought about picking those up because I loved the first one in the series and I would like to own it and then continue on with the, the rest of the books. But then I, my eye continued to scan over and I saw that they had a couple of signed editions of some of her other books. And I usually don't care a whole lot about signed books, but I don't know, I was in a festive mood and I just thought it was really exciting for some reason. So first I have Radiance by Catherine M. Valente. This is her most recent release and I've had my eye on it for quite some time. It sounds really wonderful. And basically everything that she writes sounds really good to me because I know what her writing style is like now having read the first Fairyland novel. Her writing is some of the most beautiful writing I've ever read. It's so lush, so descriptive and powerful, and she's not afraid to play with theme and, and, and use more complex language and imagery and symbolism in her children's work, so I can't even imagine what it's like to read one of her adult fiction books. Very excited about it. I don't know much about the plot of this. I know it takes place in the first half of the 20th century and has a lot to do with film, uh, the, the early days of film, but also it takes place in an alternate reality where we have already achieved space travel, so I think a lot of this book takes place in space as well, so it's like old and new kind of mixed together and it sounds very interesting. Really excited. And this last thing, is probably the most exciting thing for me. I heard Amanda from Amanda Center talk about this book really recently and I added it to my to read list but it seemed like a long shot because this, this is a book that had a very limited release. I think only 1200 or 1250 copies were ever made so not many at all. I figured I would never be able to find one or it would be too expensive. I put it on my to read list kind of in vain and then I saw it and it's Speakeasy by Catherine M. Valente. So yes, it says, this special signed edition is limited to 1,250 numbered copies. I have number 311. This is a Prohibition era novel. I think the protagonist is Zelda Fitzgerald or a Zelda Fitzgerald-like character. And to me, just like, i picturing Catherine M. Valente writing a Prohibition era jazz age novel starring Zelda Fitzgerald just sounded so whimsical and enchanting and I, I couldn't wait to get my hands on it. It's very small, probably won't take much time at all to read, but I'm so glad to have found it. I was really, really excited and I couldn't say no to it, so now I have it. All right, those are all the books that I have bought in the past four months or so. I'm really excited to read them all. I'm hoping to get to a lot of them really soon. Let me know if you've read any of these, which ones I should get to sooner rather than later. Also, just like your thoughts and feelings on any of these books, I would love to hear them. Other than that, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye!